unang tatanong sa kanya about the book. What book he said? Hey! Hi, guys. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Okay. Ano pa bango, mambango? Oh, okay. This is a very good story. This is not my usual perfume. So my friend, I, I saw him before Christmas. And then, this is my gift for him. Like, hey, thank you. The story is that he bought this perfume. This is the scent he would imagine I would wear if I pass by him. Oh, wow. Okay. I know. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's the sweetest thing You know, so, some ever. perfumes because have pheromones. Oh, diba? yeah, that's true. You remember, you know about that, diba? So Yeah, but like, wow. <laughs> so, y- yun yung gusto niya maamoy sa'yo. Well, <laughs> you don't imagine niya magiging scent ng babaeng tulad ko na hindi okay. nakilala, okay. if ever. Okay. It was so sweet though. So, uh, I've been wearing it. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. But how, how many perfumes do you really actually ha- own? I have four. Four. So How do you choose? On my mood. So, I have a I have a scent when I play golf <laughs> or when I would be a yeah. bit sporty. Oh. Um, oh. I have a scent when I'm with my friends or on a date. That's okay. it. Pero... Like me, I also have actually five paling cents ko. Pero I, I revolve around three as oh. well, depending on, on my mood. Diba? Pag what you sporty, feel? Pag sporty o tas pag more formal, I have one cent. Oh, oh. Mer- um, I guess it's it completes your your outfit. Oh, oh parang your part, look. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's why parang sabi niya, oh, I only have one signature scent for everything. Some, it, it works for some people. I think that's their signature. Yeah. But oh, yun yung amoy ni ganun. Ay, yun amoy na ganun. It's like a place when you go to it as one particular type of yeah. scent. Before ganun ako, isang scent lang. And then, I don't know. I just felt like, okay, this is more more airy, mas light. Okay, this is what yeah, I'm gonna yeah, do. Yeah. So parang, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned about this book. What was that book you mentioned about girls? For, oh, for women? yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when did you read that? What's the name? Oh, I think I... So the book is called Nice Girls Don't Get Rich. Right, yeah. That was my very first book. And I remember, I told my aunt about it. My aunt is pretty conservative. <laughs> and when she heard it, she was like, Bakit naman ganon? Mm. But the idea, I think I was in, this is, medyo late ako nag-start magbasa, like 2010? 2010, I think? Okay, yeah. And the, the main idea is that, well, yung takeaway ko is a lot of women get stuck in a relationship or maybe marriage right. because they don't have money to sustain their lifestyle or maybe the kids. Yeah. So they end up in a very sad relationship just because of the money. And I think that kind of became one of my motivation to really work on myself and be independent. Because like historically wise, like from the Stone Age, men were the ones going out you know, hunting for food, and women were the ones cooking. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, that's true. And I don't see anything wrong with it, naman. Yeah. I think it depends on how you see, how you how you want your life to be. Yes. Um, there, I have a couple of friends who's really into creating a, a family, five kids, Correct. even six kids, a basketball team. <laughs> others want just one kid, others yeah. don't even want kids. Hmm. So it depends on how you want it. Yeah, my sister's a homemaker. Like she's mm. happy with three kids in the yeah. state she lives, and her husband's my brother-in-law is the workaholic person. Ah. And he's the one working for the entire family, so and that works for them. Yeah, and it works for them. My my sister is a great uh, housewife, I would say, based on my observation. Yeah, like my 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 niece uh, and and my nephews, they're all doing great. One's nineteen, one's thirteen, one's oh, oh it's Leila for that nine, I think. So, yeah, it, it really depends on dynamics because there are few, well, not few pa talaga sa Philippines na house band. Yeah. And the wife is the one who works. So, Correct. I think it's, it's it, we shouldn't judge any relationship based on their dynamics. Yeah, as long as it works. Yeah, as long as it works. Right. So, the, although yun nga, kanina, I mentioned to you, uh, The Nice Girls Don't Get Rich was my very first book. And it also teaches the difference Parang equality, mm-hmm. gender equality. Like, bakit, let's say, when you're in an office, you would reimburse, for example. Yeah. But yung mga babae, kapag konting amount lang, they don't reimburse. <laughs> Versus guys, up to the one cent, oh, yeah. they would reimburse. Oh, yeah. Because... Everything. You, yeah, maybe because Everything. you guys are expected to be more practical, a provider, yung babae, mag-TTS, mas emotional, then they're so scared they're gonna get judged. Mart- parang martyr? 
Diba, may ganong, medyo may ganong idea, which, since I was a kid, I was not a fan of. <laughs> and when I was reading that, oh nga, there's nothing wrong if a man can ask for it, a woman can ask for it. And I guess vice versa. Yeah. Okay. So, your biggest takeaway from that book, <laughs> which made you write a few things. You wrote yeah. a few things from there. Oh, this oh is 20, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it 2010? Oh nga, no? Yak tama yung timeline. Oh, yeah. Oh. So, 2010, you were writing yeah, things that you want to get better. Yeah, so my goals. At. Yeah, your goals. So my goals, but it wasn't it wasn't a short-term goal because um, it was really my, I guess, goal in one of my goal, few of my goals in life. So back in 2010, so nakita ko tong notebook na to <laughs> um, early this year, January, when I was doing my goal setting. You're cleaning your room. I was cleaning my room as usual, and then I saw my notebook. 2010, 2011. Yeah notes and then I opened it and then it said goals in life be independent okay be more focused okay be financially free and be insensitive okay I think it may isa pa care less care less I think insensitive go- goes ha- hand in hand with caring yeah, less yeah right and yeah. I was like wow like 13 about 13 years ago I wanted to be this mm-hmm. Which means I was not that. Wait, but th- so it means that you have achieved most of those. I would say I would say I have achieved all of it in based on my standards that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because let's say me, I would say I want to be financially free. Iba mm-hmm. yung standards ko nung bata ako. Right. To now, right? Yeah. But yeah, I think the others even went a bit overboard with being more insensitive. Mm-hmm. But like that's why one of my favorite books is the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Yeah. Because it Manson. literally yes taught you. Not everything matters. Like, yep. and if Marion Monk, someone who's so emotional about something so petty, is yeah. maybe because it is the most that's happening in their lives. If you like that book, you'll like the book I, I lent you even more. Oh, yeah, yeah. I borrowed the book from him. <laughs> um, asin ngayon lang. The Art of Thinking Clearly by yeah. Robert uh, um, Dulea. Yeah. I need that because, like, just one time, uh, the other night, which happens to me rare, mm-hmm. I can't sleep because I was thinking a lot about a lot of things. Okay. And it was. A bit hard for me to be biased. I think if if th- one thing I learned uh, is that if you're thinking a lot, you should write. Yeah, I do that. Because I do that also. when you don't have clarity, it means that you know there's something going on in your mind. It's like puzzles in your head. So what you want to do is write it. So it becomes gathered. You I gather agree. the words. It's like, oh, I'll take this word, I'll take that word, put it together. Okay, it's that phrase. It doesn't have to be like, you know, grammatically correct yeah. and stuff. You, because it's your note, so you put it there, it becomes more organized. Alamo, that's why writing, I'm a, I'm, I'm, an ad, I'm a fan. I don't write every day. But like that, when, when I have my annual goals, my objectives, I write, I write it. And then when you go back, Wow, na achieve mo. Yeah, writing gives a lot of people clarity. It's one thing, it's a lost art. Because now you have phones, you can have a notepad. I always have notebooks. It's still too. different when you're yeah. typing with your finger or typing on a keyboard rather than writing it exactly. like with a pen and paper. Yes. And even the the writing, you see the personality, the character right, as yeah. compared to well, we sound old to I write like, I write like like a doctor. You know, I'm it's in. it's someone that only the one the the guy in a mercury drug will be able to, to understand. Yeah, that's, that's my handwriting. <laughs> um, honestly, when I can't understand my emotions, um, and when I'm just like, I have uncharged thoughts, I write it, usually in a form of, like, being artist ako, mm-hmm. I write poetries, and no BS, I would, I would forget that I wrote it, tapos makita ko na lang, wow, like, saan ang galing to? <laughs> It's when I can't understand, but my, I guess, writing it makes you understand yeah. it better. I used to write poetry. I don't know why I forgot. Like, what? What? Si Siri na naman salita. Anyway, I used to write poetry when in my in my 20s. It's like, it's something that I, I s- probably stopped doing. More on like writing lang lang. Mga five sentence thoughts. Oh, oh. That helps you na. I, I do that more. And oh. now, because I write so much content, like, I have a, if you go to my Facebook account, yeah. uh, Facebook fan page, I always write a grow morning to you type of post mm, wherein uh-oh. I share every morning between 7 to 11 a.m. Uh, it's been a ritual of mine to write down thoughts from last night. It's always from last uh, night, the, the night before. Yeah. So, because when at night, it's where my, my thoughts become 
unclear. So writing gives me clarity. So that's when, and then I schedule it as a post the next day. Ah, okay, gets, gets. Oh. So with the writing, I also have, actually have several notebooks by my bedside. I have four. So, it, so it's like a habit now. Yeah. It's, so it, it, it really becomes important. a habit, yeah. But what, what's one thing, um, so I was driving on the way to Manila, so I came from the province. And I like morning drives because, I don't know, it's a place for me to think and not be on my phone. You listen to like music that. or you listen podcast, to podcasts? all the yeah. time. If it's a long drive, it's an opportunity for me to learn. Yeah. And not get distracted by again yeah. phone messages or social media, and then one of my thoughts were well, inspired by a Rich Roll podcast. If you can't write, I was thinking, what if I record myself every morning, uh-huh. like how I feel? Yeah. Like this morning, if I'm being completely honest, mm. I woke up. It was so cold. I was so comfortable, and I said, "This is the life I want," mm. and I'm not. I'm gonna do my best to maintain this kind of life. Okay. Then, and then I had to rush because I was yeah. going to be late. I hope I would remember that moment. If only, so imagine if you have all those thoughts in the morning that are not stained by the noise, mm-hmm. by anything. First thought, my record mo, tapos kung babalikan mo. Yeah. So you now, right now, as of this moment, you can honestly say you're living a comfortable life? Yes. I'm living a comfortable life. Um, more than what I need, really. Mm-hmm. But, I do have a fear of being complacent because it's comfortable. Yeah. Comfort is dangerous. Exactly. That's why I'm so scared, to be honest. Because as what we were talking about a while ago, those who are really innovative, resourceful, super hard worker, are those who experience a lot of struggle. Yes. And a lot of pain, mostly financial. Yeah. So then they're just unbelievable. You can't stop them. They're unstoppable. And I'm scared that I'm gonna reach a point na magsisi say why did why did I do this before when I was able to because mm-hmm. you were yeah. so focused with the comfort. Yeah. So that's m- kind of the theme of this year to step out of my comfort zone and take that big leap. So, so what's that big leap that you're working towards <laughs> on? So okay, so in connection still with my notebook in 2011, <laughs> it said that I think every year I always say invest, uh, not I think. I started with buy a condo when I was okay, a kid. Okay. Then it became investment, investment, buy a property, real estate. Yes, yeah. So I have some investments, mm-hmm. but I still don't have, like, I want a real estate portfolio. Yes, and that's what you want. Yes, so I, I will pray harder about it and work on it, but that's my goal. Um, I know it can take time. I know it takes a lot of... Yes, it does take time. I don't have to rush it, mm-hmm. but the thing is, I feel like sometimes I'm just... Ex- Providing excuses. I would I would say, like when I was talking to you earlier, I would say with one of my best investments will always be about real estate, either a lot or um, commercial property or a residential property that you have that you can turn to something like a yeah. rental. So when he was talking about it, I was writing notes. Yeah. Because I really I I really want to do it. So mm. just the other day, I was talking to my financial advisor. Mm-hmm. I was talking to someone who has property years, and I have some meetings to talk about it. I want to be by January is like knowledge gathering. Yeah. Feb. I think even without the knowledge, the one you should be, the one the one person you should be work, working most with is a property specialist, property manager, something like that. Something someone that sells someone that sells. Properties, not just condominiums. I'm, I'm saying yeah, yeah, real yeah. estate because, and then if you tell them your intentions, like this one's for investment. I'm not looking for a house that I can live in. Like I'm looking for something I can sell and flip eventually in two years, five years, seven years. I do have that. That's the max. Read, okay, so you yeah. need, you need, uh, you need to start with one. Now yeah. I have eleven of those. I have eleven See, friends. See, that's what I want, right? So I'm growing the number of people that I work with in terms of properties because that's where I put most of my money in properties. It's Kaya nga eh. that's why I'm always broke. <laughs> no, but, no, but because your <laughs> money is broke. moving, yes, it's not because there's it's not. Um, I would say I'm a person that's that's not liquid. Like yeah. when you ask me, oh, do you have money in the bank? No. <laughs> no, but that's, no. That, that is the point Just of enough. rich dad, poor dad, yeah. right? So I was really inspired when I read that book. And um, retire young. His his last book at anong series na yon. Yeah. And then the psychology of money. Yeah, the psychology of so money. So those were really good books. And but the thing is, it's not easy to talk about 
living in debt, like yeah. um, you're not liquid to just anyone. Because a lot mm. would be scared, right? Yeah. So it, I think it's important to have that circle you can talk to. And I'm so glad that you were sharing all those notes to me very willingly. Yeah. Of um, course, for me, it comes naturally. Like I was in an event earlier, like I was in a table for different influencers and we were like 12. And next thing I know, like, there's like so many people surrounding me already. Ah, we were talking talking about personal branding. It's like, ah. it's just talking out of, you know, it being normal. Like I talk normally about personal branding, how important it is yeah. for yourself and all. And then there are already 12 people surrounding me of different ages. And like, okay, I'll get your Instagram. I'll get your TikTok. We'll talk more about this because I have to go. Because I have to talk to this person here. <laughs> I'm late for this going. I shouldn't be late for this person. <laughs> what, uh, what I what I um really found out, not through you and through other people, mm-hmm. and through the projects I do, is when you. This might sound cliche, but when you speak from the heart and your intention really is to help more people, yes, or to empower, yes, people would really listen. Yeah, and then gravitate towards you. Yeah, it's um, okay. Yeah, well, one of my friends who's talaga. who's a billionaire said this to me, and he said, if you want to make a billion help a hundred people become millionaires. Mm. If you help them, quotable quote. If you help them, they will help you back in That's some true. other way, not directly like, like they give money to you. No. Yeah. If you help them, they will help you back in other ways that you don't even know. Yeah. Possible. I super agree. So if you bring ba- val, the people who are really wealthy are those people that bring value to other people first, more than themselves. So you become selfless first. Before you become selfish, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. So you you give as much as you can based on what you can give, right? And then it just goes back to you. Eh? You know, like, when I was a kid, I didn't I didn't understand that that giving is better than receiving. Right. I swear, when I was a kid, like I wanted huh? to receive gifts. Yeah, you want to receive gifts. Like even if, until now, Christmas, I hated that. You know, a lot <laughs> of people don't give me presents. Like, okay, la sa akin merengue. Yung Basta regalo sa akin. It's, Basta, no? it's the thought now. It's one Uh-oh. thing I appreciate now. It's like, kahit bigyan mo ako ng notebook, no, notebook ka- it's calendar, thought. it's the thought that has, oh, this ako person rin. remembered me. Um, di ko di may tindihan na when you give something, it will come back in hundredfold. Sa yeah. church or in anywhere. Until I got older and um, helping people, mm-hmm. helping one person, Kumaga paying it forward. Yeah. And I guess the the fulfillment as a human being, mm. it makes you more motivated and somehow babalik. Yeah. Like, so actually, one of my um, purpose in life, I would say, is to help an average of one person a day in any yeah. way. Yeah. Um, help at least one person a day. It, like me, just opening a door for someone that can't hold on to it. That's one. Yeah. You, the mo, small, the smallest, true. the smallest things. That's, that's very true. So, um, last uh, before my end in December, we were in a bar. Mm-hmm. My 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 brother and my neighbor, and it was such a crowded bar. And then there was a group of guys who wanted to take a groofy a, a photo, and I saw them, and they were a lot. So mm-hmm. like, hey, I can take your photo. Yeah. And then okay, and then I left, and then my neighbor was like, who was um seventeen or like nineteen, nagulat. Mm. I approached a group of guys to help them. Yeah. But in my head. For me, that's no brainer. No, no, no. It's not a tough work for me, but mm-hmm. for them, they have a beautiful photo. Yeah, yeah. And that is a good thing by you barely doing anything. Correct. So tama ka, as simple as that. And even this podcast, for example, or even the stories we post on Instagram, if that inspires at least one person, yeah, it's good. It's good. And it does. It does. And it's it, surprising. It becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, like. The, for example, me, like the content I make on social media, people think that it it doesn't make money for me. Like from them, it does through advertisers uh, 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 other uh, uh, kind. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Right? Remember, like when we do ads for, for our clients, they pay in six figures, yeah. you know? And it, it's not for the content that I make. Yeah. Like the daily content I make, it's for the value that I bring. So you want to be true. a person of value, Rather than someone, you know, that does nothing in <laughs> that, like everything's for yourself. Eh? You have to give something that you know. That's yeah. I think it's um. It makes people gravitate to you. Yeah. Basic authenticity, and when you keep on doing things like this, that 
I guess as what they say, meet your highest self. This is a sentence that's always mentioned on Instagram. It really goes back to you. Yeah. Even me, um, just doing what I like, I get opportunities mm. to do um, speaking events, um, sponsored by this brand, yeah. this and that. Because this is authentic. Yeah. Rather than yung mga pilit masyado. Yeah. I, I avoid those. Like, I've, I've turned down a lot of partnerships and sponsorships with brands that, you know, I don't feel like it resonates to yeah, my resonate. brand. So, Uh-oh. sabi ko, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Uh, learning how to say no is also top-notch self-care. Yes. Right? Oh, gosh, yeah. So, so um, I forgot to say this, but if, well, one of the things is if everything is important, then nothing is important. Yeah. That's super clear. And then one of the things is saying no is saying yes. Yeah. To your priorities. To your priorities, yeah. if you yeah. say yes to everything, then yeah. wala din. Kumbaga, if, if it's not part of your growth, kasi your, your, your growth is your number one priority. So if, if it's not gonna help your growth, then why, why should you do this every day? Or why should you do this for someone else? It's not gonna help you. Alam mo, that's a thought that I'm happy we shared together also. Um, which I'm not sure how, mm-hmm. in terms of percentage, let's say viewers, ilan yung ganun mag na, will this contribute to my growth? Growth, yeah. Number one. Isa pa sa naisip ko, when you always think that way, I hope that the viewers or the listeners would understand that it's not just, it's actually not selfish because... When you help yourself grow, you, you tend to help more other. You right. tend to help more people to grow. I, I'll just give another example again. Like, for example, you have a relative who needs a million pesos for an operation to live. Mm-mm. Right? The thing is, you don't have a million. Yeah. And then that person dies, unfortunately, because you don't have a million. Will that make you sad? Of course. It's not going to make you happy, right? Yeah. But what if you have one million lying down on the side and that family member needs that one million yeah. easily they live yeah does that make you happy yes my thing yeah. is if you give something and it's it's you can't even help yourself first right yeah because you have the capability to give that one million to that person because you can yeah right so the thing is pagpasensya mo na 20,000 lang mabibigay ko eh pero kulang pa rin ako 980,000 pa rin ang kailangan ko Diba? To, to, to do operation. Ito lang mga kaya ko eh. Diba? It doesn't make you happy to. Yeah. Kahit sabi mo nakatulong ako. I gave 20,000 because my money is only 40,000. Yeah. Right? So, I agree. Right? Yes, money money, money can, can do a lot of help to make you to happy, happy as well because, you know, your loved ones can, yeah. can benefit from it. But, kumbaga, if it's, kumbaga, if you don't have that capability to do so, then you have to help yourself first. Yun yung sinasabi ko. Na, ako when I had problems financially, personally, and others around me had problems financially, I had to take care of my finances first. Because, in that way, wala akong inisip ng problema sa sarili ko. Now I can help others around me. O, kailangan mo ng tulong? Sige, tulong kita dyan. Sige ko, kailangan mo. Kaya ko. Kasi, I have no problems. I have no problems with my bills. I have no... I, I, have, I don't have to take, pro, like, paano ko babayaran ting ito? Yung loan ko, yung ganyan, yung ganyan. I don't worry about it because it's taken care of. So now I can help other people. So you help yourself first. That's what I'm trying to Just continue saying. Just like a plane, saying. right? That's what they say. When there's a, yes. right? Uh-oh. Ikaw muna. Plane crash. Put your, yes. put the safety in. Paano matutulungan yung iba nalunod kung ikaw mismo? <laughs> diba? And that's another thing, right? About, um, they usually talk about self-love. Mm-hmm. And self-love is not about salon or spa all the time. <laughs> it's really helping yourself grow. And that's not selfish because if you grow, you can help other people. And another thing which I'm, you know I'm super passionate about is healing. Yeah. And I come from, now I really understand when they say hurt people hurt people and healed people help people. Yeah. Because when you're in pain, you don't have the capacity to understand other people's situations. Correct. All you want is to distract yourself from the pain. Yeah. But when you heal, you have that understanding, okay, maybe the person is going through something, you have a different perspective. True. True. You also have more capacity to help. 
Because magaan na iparamdam mo, no, I can give. Yeah. Because I, inuno ka yung sarili ko, yeah. no, I can give back. You give because you can. Exactly. Right? And I remember yung isang quote nga nung nalala ko from a relative of mine because he helps because, not because he can, but because he knows also how it felt when he didn't have yeah. any. Yeah. It was one of my favorite things I remembered. Because if you asked me before about giving, 10, 15 years ago, I'd be selfish. Like, I wanted everything for myself and, and all that. And I understand the concept of, of giving. It's not because you have it. It's because you know how it feels to have nothing. <laughs> Com- that's, ano, yeah, that's so, that makes us more human. And mm. uh, I remember when I was also, pagka-graduate ko ng college, so I was a bit spoiled when I was in college. Bigay lahat. Pag-graduate, cut lahat. Mm. Unless I go to our... Um, family house in the province and handle the business. But I wanted to do my own. Mm. Do ko na-realize, oh my God, the mahal pala ng toothbrush. So <laughs> I purchased the cheaper one. Yeah. Nagdugo yung gums ko. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, I was so, ano, lahat nung sukli sa tol, when my, <laughs> my dad drives, I asked for it, yung mga bare-barya. So I was living in the fear of scarcity. Yeah. Na, and then my dad was like, no, make money work for you, which I did not understand. Yeah. Hindi ako magbibigay na kahit ano, ano ngayon na now when I see my younger cousins na sobrang hihingi, natatawa ako because mm. I was that. Yeah. Until you realize what ha- having also available resources Correct. from your end yeah. and what it feels to feel like you're lacking. Yeah. Then yun. So that's why you give more and you help, you help yourself. Yeah. G- giving, I mean, Giving, being a person who's giving is such an underrated trait nowadays. That's true. Just because of, you know, we're coming to a recession now. Yeah, diba? isa pa yan. Isa so, yan mga people are holding out their finances Hello, and investment. Hello, and crypto is so down, man. That's what I'm, that's and, what and I'm saying. I still have investments there. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise. But it's, it's how it is now. Like, we're going to fast, fast pace na yung... Na na no na, na fast track na recession. Oo nga. Right? Totoo. It was supposed to be 2025 I think. Well, you know, way na fast track lahat dahil sa pandemic. Mm-hmm. Digitizing, the communications, the businesses. Sorry but I keep on mentioning healing, the fast track for others like me because we were stuck at home. Super, yeah. Um, I guess recession. Yeah. In a way na train tayo. We were also in a way trained to manage how it is when things get out of our... Things are not within our control. Yeah. Because pandemic was, you can make as much plans as you want, but mm-hmm. nope, you suddenly cannot leave yeah. your house. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things I learned uh, with stoicism. Um, so what is it, it again? Stoicism. Ah, okay, stoicism. Being, stoicism. Oh, yeah, stoicism. Oh, oh. yeah so, so being... Uh, having that kind of mindset wherein you focus on the things yeah. that you only have control over. Yep. And let go of the things that you don't have any control whatsoever. Okay, I'm a <laughs> huge fan of Stoicism. I yeah. might be, I'm not sure if you're a fan of Memento Mori. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Amor Fati, Memento Mori. You're going Mori. to die. Yeah, like, you are going to die. Why do you yeah. give so much shit about other things you cannot control? Mm-hmm. Me sitting here with all these lights in front of you is so important. Yeah. And this will not happen. Again, the exact moment is different five minutes from now. Yeah. Things like that. And I'm such a fan of talking about death, actually. Because mm-hmm. it's inevitable. And yeah. It will happen. So I like talking about it. And in Stoicism, the letting go of things you can't control, mm-hmm. I would say I always stay in control. That, that, that's, that has been my personality. So, and I always have backup plans. If plan, will not, plan A will not work, I have B and C. Mm-hmm. Pandemic, bam, wala yung lahat. And then I read about stoicism. It's just like it's more of a practical mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and not, I mean, other people would say stoics don't have emotions, but it's more on we do get sad, we do get happy, but we just don't dwell on it for so long. Yep, that's a fact. Yeah, and you don't dwell on your emotions that long. Yeah. Be- because you know, at the end of the day, in five years' time, that thing that you're worrying so much right now won't even matter in five years time maybe in that's, six months time yeah that's like that's i write i wrote down something that worried me around june 2020 and i read it 
I was laughing. <laughs> Problema ko pala ito. No? Diba? <laughs> Sabi ko, no to. <laughs> But you know, I think it also takes um, a wider perspective about life mm-hmm. na what you're very much worried about, it doesn't, you're still a, I think I remember this, ito yung problema mo. But when you look at the map or the globe, it's still the same. Yeah. So don't kid yourself over something that will not matter in five years. Yeah. Here's what the word looks like before your problem and here's what the lo- word looks like after your problem. Doesn't change. You know what I remember <laughs> when I was having, um, so all of us had like qu- quite some anxiety or depression during the pandemic. And I, I, I had some challenges. And what got me through, apart from the usual things I do, mm-hmm. is honestly um, to pursue my advocacies. It made me realize how small my problems are. Yeah. And then helping people honestly makes you feel good about yourself. Did you compare also. your problems to other people? Um, n- not necessarily compare, but then I get aware that I can spend my energy handling these problems yeah. more than what I am. Because mine naman was not life endangering, but it was a bit right. of emotional. Uh-oh. But you know, when you help someone, you, you feel good about yourself? Yeah. And then I feel better. Yeah. And then it, it helped me actually. Okay. 